Ready? All right. This is the Fairfax County History Commission Confederate Names Committee meeting for Wednesday, September 30th, 2020 at 2 p.m. The attendee call in number is 1-408-418-9388. The event number is 173-593-4562. I'm about to call to order to conduct this meeting wholly electronically and to effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by FOIA and the emergency ordinance. This board needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. It is a bit cumbersome, so I ask you in advance for your patience. First, because each member of this board is participating in this meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating and that each member's voice is clear, audible, and at an appropriate volume for all of the other members. Accordingly, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and the location from which you are participating. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each other, hear each of your colleagues. Following this roll call, we will vote to establish that every member can hear. Ann Stutz. I'm here and I'm just outside Vienna, Virginia. Carol Herrick. I'm here, McLean, Virginia. Mary Lipsy. Mary Lipsy here in Springfield, Virginia. Tammy Mananero. Uh, I'm here in Mount Vernon. Phyllis Walker Ford. Walker Ford. Phyllis is here in Clifton, Virginia. Greg Wilson. Greg Wilson. Greg Wilson here at Great Falls. Um, Denise, Denise Dressel. I'm here in Prince William. Liz Kroll. I'm here in Alexandria. Chris Barbersack. I'm here in Fairfax City. This is Barbara Nape and I'm in Reston. At this point, I am passing the virtual gavel to the commission chair so that I may be heard to make the requisite motion. I move that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of this board. A second. seconds. Thank you. All in favor, everyone can hear? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you. Second. Having established that each member's voice may be heard by every other member, we must establish the nature of the emergency that compels these emergency procedures. The fact that we are meeting electronically, what type of electronic communication is being used, and how we have arranged for public access to this meeting. Therefore, I move that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this board to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend any such meeting, and that as such, FOIA's usual procedures, which require the physical assembly of this board and the physical presence of the public, cannot be implemented safely or practically. I further move that this board may conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated telephone line and that the public may access this meeting by WebEx virtual meeting Attend I call 1408-418-9388. Event number 173-593-4562. It is so moved. Second, Mary Lipsy. Uh, finally, finally, and I guess we have to vote. Oh, everyone in agreement? Oh, hi. 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 Finally, it is next. It is next. It is next required that all matters addressed on today's agenda must address the state of emergency itself, are necessary for the continuity in Fairfax County government, and or are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of this board's lawful purpose purposes, duties, and responsibilities. It is so moved. Second, Herrick. Thank you. All all agree? Aye. Yeah. Aye. Thank you, Ann. I will, Thank you, Ann. I will 
take the gra the gavel and hope the echo. Anybody has echo echo words. Is, is this one of these this situations, one of these situations where if we all mute where if we all mute ourselves, it might help? Might. Yes. Might. Please. Yes. Please. 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 Every, now, is this good? So far, I don't hear myself, so I think it's all right. All right, to begin the meeting, I'm going to start with chairman comments. They're very measured. Um, first, I think it's important um, that that recognize that we acknowledge that recognition is due to the two dozen or so individuals most well known to us as dedicated local historians who prepared statements for the Mar Monument public hearing. I wanted to note I appreciated Mary's comments offered from her teacher's perspective that there are three stories to Civil War history in Fairfax County, that of the Union, that of the Confederates, and that of the American, of the African Americans. Now, um, I would like to offer um, a personal story. As a docent at the Smithsonian Museum of American History several years ago, I was asked to lead a group of South Koreans through. They were in the US visiting museums as part of their planning for a South Korean National Museum. I offered a stop. We weren't quite sure what they wanted. So I offered a stop at the Korean War Museum, a quick exhibit. Um, the response was, no, we know all about that. We want to see your civil war. So Mary is a fellow docent, knows this hall, and perhaps if, um, others of you do as well. When you walk into the civil war exhibit, there is a, a floor to ceiling wall, and it has a, um, a major, um, crack down the center of it and and it's jagged and on one side of the wall that it's blue and on the other side of the wall it's gray on the on the blue side there is a a portrait of lincoln and a portrait of a farmer since he is was supporting free labor on the gray side is a portrait of lee and an enslaved man I just pointed out we we're just starting through the exhibit, not sure what they wanted, and there was immediate, very animated conversation in Korean. All their cameras came out and they started clicking, and I was, we, they they knew English, but they obviously were most comfortable at this point in Korean. So I spoke. I had no idea what started the reaction, and so I asked their interpreter, and the response was very direct. You have both sides. You have the enemy, you have the loser. Disbelief, complete disbelief that we had this. So I explained that the total is our history, that this is what we do. There are two sides in the Civil War. It's our best effort to explain the conflicts. The experience was very enlightening. Um, I shared this with some of you, and the response was that we should consider including it in a paragraph form in our report, along with our narrative about interpretive markers. And we can discuss that later in the meeting. So I think the point was clear. Um, now I'm going to move on to the minutes. I thank Tammy. Um, do you all have any um, corrections? They were posted. You all received them and then they were also posted. And these are the minutes from our last meeting, which is, uh, I'm blanking when it was. It was um, September, September 19th, right? right? Any additions or changes? If not, um, um, may I have an approval of the minutes? I approve the minutes. <laughs> okay, you can raise your hand if you're muted. Okay, thank you. All right, right on to business. Um, do we get do do we second and then all say aye for minutes? What in? Do we second that motion and then all say aye for minutes? It's hard. I rate I ask you to raise hands. So oh, oh, for everything. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, next up is for discussion, which will be interesting. I if you're gonna talk, I guess we need to unmute and raise your hand so that I know that 
which of the white boxes is speaking. Okay. Um, these, this first um, are the Confederate draft for the Confederate names inventory report recommendations that are coming. Our plan is to have, if you if you all after discussion approve them, they will go. It will go to the history commission as a whole, um, as approved and recommended by the CNC. Right. Um, the first is um, I'm still following through on. I think Ray was the first one to suggest it, and that was that we um, put the research that's been done that we not lose it and that we put it into the Virginia room as a collection. So the recommendation is short, but it states the History Commission recommends that all research materials generated by the Confederate name inventory project be placed as a collection in the Virginia room. So that is the that is the recommendation. Um, I've already had um, Carol Carol mentioned in a, in a discussion with me that there may be some um, incorrect information there. Um, I realized that and I would I would think that we would put our, our final the final collections of, of research in um, and that is an issue, but I don't think it's something that would um, deny us going through with this. So do you have comments or thoughts or Anything? I'd say it's um it's a work product, right? I mean, it's being put yes. out there as a you yes. know as background, I guess. Right. So, so if it's imperfect, that I mean, maybe there's a caveat that goes at the top of the report or the top of the materials or something. Right. Well, our concern is is that with all the work that's gone into this, we don't want it lost. So, Chris, you're going to have the if this if this happens, you'll just have to make more room. So, okay, Greg is saying yes. I think right. Yeah. I have a okay. question. Um, is it going to be um, available online? I'm just thinking, like for example, if there are public hearings, you know, for the for the things that uh, that are going to be discussed, and they kind of want to see at what level we went through. They want to see the background before or during the public hearing. Will it be available? I mean, I just I'm sensitive because of COVID. Like, are we ever going to be able to go back to the library again? Um, so, will it be online or will it be just, um, you know, a physical? Um, I, I have I have no idea. I the main thing is to get them into into Chris's shop. I think. Um, I think, of course, the, the report itself may be just vast, so that'll be available online. I would be. I would think that that we'd want to make sure whatever we have online is is not just sort of basic raw. Raw work product, but more of our finished product. Otherwise, it's just misleading everybody who's on the Internet. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and and remember, this is a this is what we're talking about. Is um, when Denise talks about the time frame, the the format of the report, and we've all acknowledged we're clerks for this process, but we do have an opportunity to offer recommendations. In the and if you all remember, we agreed that's the recommendations for consideration by the board of supervisors. So this is our recommendation. The details of it uh, won't be in this report. This is saying this is what we want done with all the work that's been done by everybody. So I, your your questions are are valid, Tammy. But I think that for the purposes of this, we want to just make sure they understand that this body of research needs to. As as a collection, I used a capital C on it to be put put forth. Other discussion or comment? This is okay. um, the only thing I'm uh, I'm thinking is that a lot of these are educated guesses, right? And I mean, now for the Braddock district, I can name three that I'm absolutely sure about. You know, and so. I don't know if we need to say that or just imply it somehow, but um, 
anyway, that's just a thought. I think it's valid, and I would say that before we send it forth, then that's a discussion that the commission would have to have and decide what we're what we are calling. You know how how we're going to define the research. I think of Greg's first list, which was this mammoth list, is one thing. So um, the nuances of it, I'm not denying them. I'm just saying that oh, those are once we have an acceptance that yes, it can go into the Virginia room, then we get down to work on how how we are packaging it and what we're packaging. Does that seem a conflict at all? Sounds good to me. Barbara, if I may, so put slightly yes, different. Yes. Yeah, put slightly differently, I, I'm presuming, and I thought we'd already drafted this, and maybe we have, and we talked about it. Um, there has to be a discussion of our methodology, and to Mary's point, all the limitations about what we ended up with, right? Where, where those kind of disclaimers about almost use it at your own peril, in in some cases, uh, would be appropriate. I think. I, I I agree, and the, re the report it itself has a section where um, the methodology is discussed, and we certainly should include that. This isn't just going to go as a as yeah. a batch of documents. Absolutely, yeah. so very valid. Sure. Um, any other discussion on it? Just, just on that same point, uh, Barbara. So I presume at some point we're going to see a close to final whole document with all the pieces together. For us to take one last look at is that and, and make comments is that correct yes yes this is denise's um i'm looking to see if i if i have it printed out denise i didn't print out the last page of the time but there is a place where the history commission sees the report and forwards it yes yeah and i would assume that um uh, we have another proposed meeting of this body on october 15th and a, a close to finished draft. It won't be, I will not call it final. <laughs> but at least it will be assembled for your review, for this yes. body's review. And then at the November, uh, whatever that first meeting is in, uh, for, of the whole commission, um, there I should be uh, at least the, the close to final draft of that. And right. then okay. November, it'll start going up through my chain, the internal, the, the uh, DPD side of things. Right. Very stupid. Yes. Yes, Greg. Um, you, yes. You'll see, yeah. seeing this as a as a whole thing at least twice. Yeah. Got it. Thank you. Thank yep. you for bringing it up. You know, I I'm so involved in it that I I neglect to think the fact that not everyone is in down in the weeds of it as some of us are. So it's a very good question, and absolutely so. We can verify then. So, um, all right. Are there um, any further discussions on this particular one? And uh, may I have a, um, I guess, a sense of approval? I wasn't asking for a vote per se, but if you all approve, we can do a formal vote if you'd like. Um, I approve, Eric. Carol, yes. I approve. Okay. Everybody, yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right, yes. we'll move forward with that. All right. Um, the next one, I hope you all have had an opportunity to read. And this is going in as a recommendation. Um, Anne and I had a, had um, some spirited discussions about this and um, talked with Denise as well. Um, we think this is very important. And this has to do with the very first sentence says the history commission proposes these recommendations as a means of ensuring that a critical element of decision making regarding the disposition of Confederate linked assets, a robust public process will be initiated and pursued by the board of supervisors. Then I go on to say the commissioners sought out, and I say I simply because I wrote the draft for you all. We're saying the commissioners sought out, studied, and assessed guidelines proposed and followed by multiple national and regional public history organizations, as well as local governments, for addressing the divisive issue of Confederate names in public places. Consistent through all guidelines is the requirement to engage the public in an open dialogue prior to definitive action by the governing authority. The commission recommends that the Board of Supervisors adopt such a guideline. 
Pursuant to such a process, presentations during public hearings and community gatherings, gatherings would be accepted for a period of advisement and consideration. And then we provide an example from the national level, the Advisory Council Historic Preservation. We note the Atlanta History Center guidelines. And finally, um, we, we note um, wording from the Fairfax City uh, proposals. Um, and each one of them talks about the fact that outcomes will not be predetermined, that discuss public process that includes productive, inclusive community conversations is essential. Um, so that is what we are putting in as a recommendation. And I would be interested to know your comments, your thoughts, and if you are in agreement. The consistency is that there's a, a robust public process <clears throat> prior to decisions being made. Uh, this is Mary. After sitting through the Mar hearing and realizing. Mary, I can't hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll get louder. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. After, Hi. after sitting in the in the Mar hearing and listening to the 25 and all the speakers who called in, et cetera, it was clear to us that I believe that the board had already decided without hearing from the uh, community. And I was totally surprised that they made a decision that evening. Uh, I don't know, I guess I'm not privy on Board of Supervisors hearings and I just assume they go back to the closed quarters, listen to what the public said, and then came out with a um, later on with a decision. So anyway, I think it's very important that we do involve the public in the process. I don't know exactly how that would be done, but to give them an opportunity to speak and react. That's it. Thank you, Mary. Who that's really that's, that's really interesting. I haven't had a chance to go back and um, and watch. I was having technical difficulties and I couldn't um, observe it at the time. But um, but the, that's a really interesting response. Um, so I, I like I like what we have here as far as it goes. But I have to be honest that um, because I'm not absolutely completely finished with my part of it, like I'm kind of not ready to um to put these in stone yet and i know they don't have to be in stone at this point but um but i think that like comments like mary's like so maybe we want to include something in there um you know using the word deliberate um that that we would ask that that a deliberation be part of the process um so i think i'm going to have a better idea when i've sort of you know completed all of my research like you know exactly what i would say here i don't know i mean as long as this is flexible and we can add to it later um, I mean, I do like what it says. All right. Who else? Yeah, Barbara, this is Greg. I, I uh, to Tammy's point, I, I, I may want to wordsmith it down the road, but but I, I like the general thrust of this. I think to Mary's point, um, for those that are concerned about the process uh, in our government, uh, rightfully so, uh, this addresses a lot of those concerns. And um, uh, as I recall, the legal memorandum that was shared with us some months ago. Uh, as you go through, what would it take down the road to change the street name? I think there, as I recall, all sorts of safeguards already built into the law. So local communities, anybody that has an interest, whatever the issue is at that time, ha has some protection as to the, the process and procedures to be followed. So I, I generally, I like where this is going. Thank you. Thank you. What else? Carol, anything? Uh, not at the moment. Thank you. All right. I got, I like Tammy's word of um, deliberate, you know, just emphasis on a process that people uh, that people can understand and that's useful. And, and and I think you've done a wonderful job writing it, Barbara. Well, thank you. But um, I, I would think that <clears throat> deliberation also um, where we are calling for um, that that the I presentations um, presentations during public hearings and community gatherings would be accepted for a period of advisement and consideration. And I think yeah. deliberation That's, is a much stronger word. So I would certainly 
Um, I concur with that. So um, anything else? This did evolve out of the public hearing, the MAR public hearing on the 15th. I mean, as we um, as we saw how how it was how the process was handled that evening. So I think this is important. It reinforces what Craig is pointing out in the original board matter in motion that there would be um, community um, participation. So, OK, um, do I hear a? Uh, a Barbara, Barbara, if oh, yes, who's yes, speaking? Sorry. It's Denise. Oh, yes, Denise. So I just had um, two quick observations. One is that I think both the um, advisory council recommendations or guidance document and the Fairfax City um, write up that uh, Mayor Meyer prov provided us, mm -hmm. I think both of those are going to be included and in whole in the a report if i'm not mistaken yeah and i think maybe uh, this is just this is um kind of nitpicky but we might want to refer say like uh something a phrase about you know see further on or you know see uh just just refer to them that that they'll be able to find that entire document that you've excerpted okay very good point. And I did neglect to say that there, <clears throat> excuse me, in the report, there is a section where they asked for guidelines. Right. So we could reference that they have, have them here, but then reference that the, that the full documentation is in um, um, is in the guidelines. Very good point. Later in the report, right. And then the, the second question that I had um, just while I was reading through that, since we have brought up, or you, you've mentioned two documents that are included in the report and that but then you have the Atlanta um, reference. I'm wondering if that might be out of place. Um, just just because um, there's no other in the in the report, there's no other supporting documentation for that Atlanta study. Good point. And as, as you and Ann know, um, <laughs> I went back to that site four times trying to find the actual phrase for the for the I all I did was write down public process productive inclusive community conversations. So it could be that we go without that. We still have it. We have a national and a local, which are both very strong. So um, that may be um, because we do not have a, a a specific document from the Atlanta History uh, Center. Right. So it's, since we're having guidelines from a variety of, of organizations and here we're making a point and our national and our local are both saying essentially the same thing, perhaps we could eliminate that. Yeah, if, if we don't find it, I think that's right. Okay. Uh, Barbara, what about the Alexandria? They have been through the process and completed it. It's... All 11 pages of its process are in the guidelines. Okay, all right. So, I'm not saying no, I'm just saying that's where it is. It's it's included. Okay. Along with ARB, the Park Authority, and um, um, Advisory Council, Preservation Virginia. I mean, we have they have so many guidelines that if they will take the time to read them, they will okay. be quite well educated in the process. That's good. Okay, anything else? I hope everybody will look at the Atlanta History Center. Um, yes. Because it is specifically on Confederate monuments because they've done a, a really big, uh, a, a really big job of addressing it. And they have case studies, they have resources, books to read, articles to read. It is just a lot of information there. Um, so, and while you're there, look and see if they summarize their public policy very well. <laughs> I, I can't find it either. <laughs> you can get you can get lost in it, and um, of course, they're they're down there in the deep south. They have Stone Mountain and everything else. So they're dealing with monuments, which we um, have the one to John Marr, and that is it. So that is um, another reason that's important to attempt to define the markers as interpretive of history and they are not glorification. So um, 
anything we can do for there. All right, are we ready for a um, an approval vote on this? This is our this uh, recommendations um, that that we are we are urging um, a robust public process. And is everyone when, in favor? When we say yes, we're saying this is a good draft that might change some slightly. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. I mean, um, we're 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 forwarding it as a draft to the commit full commission. Yeah, understood. Right. I think so. Okay. All right, and I will um we'll take day. out Atlantic History Center at this point. Someone saying something? No. Okay. All right. Now the next one, um, some of you are aware of, and some of you are not. Um, let me find my piece of papers here. Okay. Um, this is next steps, and this is a bit involved. Um, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to put something. This is our the history commission advising the board of supervisors of our initiative. This is not the BOS directing us to do anything. This is our this is what we are doing and we are telling them that this is what we're going to do. Um, it's in a major initiative in 2021 to, to be to begin development of a research inventory by magisterial district identifying publications, documents, records, and such miscellaneous materials that provide access into the histories of African-American communities throughout Fairfax County. Um, this is not in any way to say that this hasn't been ongoing. There are so many commissioners that are already doing this, have been involved in this. Um, I think of Lynn and Clifton, I think of Mary with her um cemetery group and liz is doing things with the park authority um and phyllis and i phyllis is is a full partner in trying to come up with how we can articulate this um because even though people have done this over over years in talking to naomi she said well you know i was working on black history in mason long before anybody was interested and i have two there are two books on on blacks in in mason district that are in the virginia room so uh, this is an effort not to usurp anything but to to bring together this information and, and to establish an integrated program that that the history commission can can present it collect it present it uh, digitally and in the public presence so that that it will go on the website it will be able people will be aware of all that is going on in this area of our history phyllis was going to say some words because i'm really i am so reliable relying on everything she's taught me in the last six weeks that we've been talking about this Phyllis. Phyllis. Oh. <laughs> uh, my recommendation in my conversation with Barbara was um, last October, I went to, I was invited to come to a teacher workshop. And at lunchtime, and the workshop was to talk about African American history in Fairfax County. And there were uh, members of the Luther Jackson Alumni Association and several others who were speakers to talk about what it was like growing up in Fairfax County and the difficulties of, of going to segregated schools. But at lunchtime, the uh, several other people started talking about uh, having to go and do oral history to capture some of the African American history and to talk about the, uh, looking at the African American schools that were started back in the early in the uh, 1800s. And so I started saying, well, Jeff Clark has done schools from in Fairfax County from 1870 to 1995. Somebody else had had collected well, Luther Jackson alumni had collected oral history. Um, so it, at that point, I realized that there, there's all this information that's already out there. But there's no way to to know. 
So Barbara in, in talking said, maybe we can have some resource guide because there are things in the Virginia room. I know that um, some of the Luther Jackson alumni have added the yearbooks and, and Chris has been collecting quite a few things over the last few years. And there are pieces in each of our districts that African-American history has been collected, but we don't really know from district to district what's out there. So that's why I thought this would be a good idea to have some resource that captures what's in each district already and what might we add to that. Um, this is Mary, I'd like to, Mary, I'd like to. if I could add uh, uh, something, an experience that I had interviewing uh, African Americans for the Providence District oral history. And one of the stories, and I, I can't say I remember the lady's name, but I remember where she lived because I interviewed her in a house. But she has the story of, uh, and she put it this way, I was Rosa Parks way before there was a Rosa Parks. And just the short story is that in DC, the buses were segregated when they came across the Potomac River, or excuse me, they were integrated in DC. When they came across the Potomac River into Virginia, they then became segregated and she refused to give up her seat. And there's a whole story of what happened to her and threatening with arrest, et cetera. And I want every one of my students to know that story because, I mean, this is, I did this after I retired, but that's the kind of thing that needs to be shared because with understanding comes empathy, I hope. And with empathy comes progress and change. So, you know, I am all for it. There is just one thing, Barbara, that I would add to your statement and possibly say historical Fairfax County, because there are parts of Fairfax County that are now Falls Church and are also Fairfax City, but were once part of Fairfax County, and we need to capture that story too. So that's it. That's a good idea, Mary. Also, because um, you figure the fourth Rosenwald School was in Fairfax County when it was made, but it, now it's in Alexandria. So yes, our boundaries, everything's changed. I think it's a wonderful project. I think it will be um, really, really important and and a, and a, something that we can work hard on and be very proud of. And it's a very positive contribution to the history of the community of the county um, that will be a, a, a nice, um, almost a relief from what we're working on right now. Yeah, I agree. I think this is a this is a great initiative. Um, I kind of see two two parts to it is that um, we're in a way taking the things that already exist and making sure like for our um, historic inventory of sites, um, you know, it does that have um, enough information about the African American sites in each of our districts, like so using the tools that we already have and making sure like, for example, in um, the Mount Vernon district, um, we have gum springs and and that is just you know an overview site whereas there are many things within gum springs that really would warrant more description and more attention um so this is a great opportunity i'm always worried about you know uh, ron chase wearing his seat belt all of the time like our like <laughs> I, I worry um that you know uh, he holds so much in his head and um, so much at his fingertips, and he needs about four interns to work with him. But um, but just using those, using the inventory, using brochures that we have out there, all of those things, and making sure that those are as complete as to African American history as they can be, and then also just seeing what other resources we might need to have. Okay, thank you. Two two points um, on Falls Church. Um, I was. I was um, going through the Netherton book um, <clears throat> the other night um, because I, I, owe a, I owe a narrative on the lost cause. And um, I ended up in the section with um, Falls Church and um, the African American community there. So you're absolutely, absolutely right on that. Um, and Liz, you might might mention what you told to me that you all within the park authority are looking at how you can identify some of the archaeological um 
site resources that connect to the African Americans? Well, we um, we are starting an initiative, and I mean it's at this point in time because of staff limitations and COVID and other things like that. But we're starting an initiative um, where we're going to be, um, and to start out, it's it's I would call it culture resources, and it could include cemeteries and sites and places and whatever. Um, but we're going to create an app. Um, where this is really in its infancy, but our goal is that this could be something that, um, you know, could be crowdsourced. So, for example, if the Cemetery Preservation Association um, was working with a community with African American um, family members who know about certain. Um, you know, former house sites or former cemetery areas or, you know, event um, occurrences in a similar way to when Barbara organized the Civil War Sites Inventory in the early 2000s, um, where those things could then be crowdsourced on an app, and then we can take that information. I mean, we have a lot of information, but there's, you know, there's always more. And so um, where that could be, and just slightly off the subject, but um, I was trying to find something um, for someone the other day, and um, I, I had looked at this a while back, but I ended up online, and prior to my joining the Park Authority, Barbara and Michael Ryerson pulled together a wonderful documentary on the construction of the slave quarter out of Sully. And it's, I can send a, a link to anybody who might be interested in it, but even, gosh, I don't know, what would that be like 18 years later, maybe, Barbara? Um, it's, still, it's still as, I think, as timely as it was when it was done. Right, right. That was, that the slave quarter is, um, the, it was a construction, not a reconstruction, but a construction on, on the, um, footprint of what is most presumed to be one of the cabins, and we had we found the original hearthstone, and um, yeah, it was fascinating study. And then we we did a right. So so the the point is, there's a lot that's been going on, and um, it's you know, so many people aren't aware of it. And so we, I will also tell you all that, and Phyllis and I talked about this. This is something that that some of us have been talking about prior to June 23rd. This was going to be something that we were going to do and we were working on how to present it. You know, get it to the commission and, and all of this and envelop everything and then then along came Confederate names. And so it we had to put it on the back burner and um, I just mentioned to Denise, you know, we have this. But we're, it's on the back burner, and Denise, of course, wasn't aware that we were going to do this either, so was enthused. And at the beginning, Phyllis and I did not think that we would recommend that it be part of the report because we want to make sure, but by putting it in as a next step, we are advising the Board of Supervisor, and it's an opportunity to let them know this is what we are doing as a body. And it's it's an opportunity for us to announce it this way as a very positive thing. So um, I think it serves serves the um, the project well. And we are the way we're stating it is that <clears throat> excuse me, it's ours. It's the, it's the commission. It's not a directive from the BOS. It's a history commission initiative. And I think that's important. And hand is up. Yes, ma'am. Um. It just took, as I was looking at it and sort of shuffling around in my my computer um, to find it and looking at it under next steps, it occurred to me that we might find a different name from next steps because it almost when you just look at it in a table of contents, it almost looks like it's next steps for the board of supervisors. But the next steps for the board of supervisors is more the recommendation section. So I don't know. I, I don't know if we even need to decide now, but I, it, it's the way that I was just looking at it and it was it, it startled me, even though I've been looking at it for 
a week or two or three months for all I know. But, um, but yeah, it just kind of looks like it's their next steps and it's not their next steps at all. Well, but if you, um, we'll have to clarify that. And as you know, it, Anne and Denise and I meet on Fridays to try and organize for the next step. And and so we've been talking about how we how we differentiate between recommendations for consideration. This is not for their, this is not a recommendation to them to be considered. This is something we're doing. So we thought the good place would be in the next step. But certainly we and we have down here under next steps and after the African American initiative. Yeah. So it's certainly worth talking about because we want them okay. to understand this is a separate a thing. One of the things I'll say about um, um, Phyllis is very involved with all with regional things, and you might mention your your what happened when you gave your tour at um, at Laurel Grove, and this was just this is what I mean by spreading the word. So tell them about your tour. Have to unmute. Have to unmute. Yeah. Okay. Um, we were asked by the um, Homeowners Association Board of Directors of Manchester Lake Subdivision, which is actually a subdivision just across the street from the school museum on Beulah Street. And what they wanted us to do was to let their community of Manchester Lakes know what was in their neighborhood. So it was kind of a conversation of here's some history in your neighborhood and, and let's talk about what that history is. So it was a one hour presentation and we did, we went around, we were able to take cameras around and show the interior of the school and point out some of the artifacts that were there. But the conversation was more of look at where you are today and let's step back and tell you who was here in 1860 and we began with um, talking about african-american families that were actually there in that area where these homes and, and uh, condos were um, that people are now walking on ground where former slaves were uh, african-americans who lived through the civil war built their homes and and lived there and one of the things that one of the questions that came up um, was a woman who was asking when we talked about students that actually went to the law Grove school she was asking um why when we said that the boys and who were students at the school would help the teacher uh, bring in the wood for the stove the pot belly stove go get water because there was no water on the property. So they'd have to go to a neighboring property and get water from a well. And, and her question was, why did only the boys have to do that? Well, we're talking about some things that were happening in 1882, 1884. It was different than what it is today where it doesn't matter whether it's the girl or the boy who goes to, to get it. And, and so it was, it was almost like thinking about a time capsule and trying to explain what was happening then and, and what's happening now. So now we're looking at a series of conversations that the community can come in uh, on Zoom uh, virtual tours to talk about different things and share that history. It's terrific. Oh, wonderful. May I add something, Barbara? Barbara, you're on mute. Barbara, this is Carol. May I add something? Yes, yes, please do. It's uh, sort of on the topic. Um, this regards Pleasant Grove Church uh, in McLean. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a formal black church, which has a museum there now. And they've been after me for two years to come up with a historic marker. But they have not been able to get all the documentations. 
And finally, somebody got mad and went around, and finally, somebody's shoebox under a bed came up with the documentation that is needed for a marker for the church. So that's been ongoing for um, a couple of years. I mean, it's not something that's just come up because of all everything that's been going on. But uh, I am, Mary, working on that as we speak, and we'll get you a rough draft shortly. Lost her. That's it. That's it. Okay. You, you great. Me. Barbara, it's great. Okay. I, I'm sorry I had to step away when this conversation got started to take a call about a fraud on my credit card, so I apologize. Uh, I, I think it's a great, uh, great effort, great initiative. To Ann's point about, you know, just uh, putting in the next section, I think as, it, as long as it's clearly labeled a commission initiative, we're, we're fine, would be my only thought, but I, I think it's a great effort. <clears throat> okay. Um, and um, I don't know if anyone else has any other thing. Phyllis is very modest, but she's also involved with professors from the um, um, Norfolk State University and George Mason and putting on a regional um, webinar in October. And so we've also talked about um, you know, once we get established the through the commission that we can go to um, the Virginia Humanities, there's all kinds of things that we can do um, to generate support for this kind of a, um, the, for the ongoing efforts, the efforts that are already happening and those that we can help um, generate. So I, I think it's, um, it is, it would be a major initiative in 2021 and how nice for us to have something positive like that. So. Okay, and again, this is a draft and it will go as a draft with our um, approval to the full commission. Okay, um, do I have any further further comments on I really appreciate all your thoughts and suggestions. Anything else? Chris, I know you have a stash of, of information in the Virginia room already. Right? Quite a lot. Um, we have closest thing to what you're talking about, uh, I, I think it's phenomenal that you're going to build this inventory so well needed. Um, we have kind of a pathfinder to um, some books and titles that we have, but they're just for books, so nothing on records or things like that. So, yes, this would be amazing to have. Good, good. Glad to hear that. All right. Um, do I have a an approval of, that's my way of doing a vote, approval of, of everyone that's here? Um, in favor. Yes, yes. yes and Carol, yes, I assume yes. that you're yeah, thumbs up. Okay, good. Okay, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. That's very I'm very excited about it. I really am. So all right, now thank you all. We are moving to progress reports. And Denise, if it's all right, we'll start with you um, and your report and then go to the individual members. Is that all right with everyone? Sure. Okay. okay. Sorry. No. I'm looking for it. I have it. <laughs> yeah, no, I sent it to you. <laughs> I printed it out. So um, I don't know whether it would be best to share my screen or whether we can just uh, talk this through because we've all seen the update. So um, <laughs> as Barbara um, said earlier, and Barbara and I sort of meet as an executive team on Fridays, and mostly it's just to keep the project on track and moving forward. Right. Um, and then we discuss issues, topics that have come up, issues that have come up during a during the week that we need to sort of make some decisions about or um, things that we need to bring back to this committee for. So that's that's mainly what my report is about is um, from our Friday meetings, what, what has taken place. So we uh, sent out a new update of the time, what I'm calling the Confederate Names Inventory Report timeframes. So basically it was, I just took an outline of what I saw the major portions of this report being and put some time frames around them so we could we could get this you know as a project um, we added some specific 
uh, text to the executive summary, we just sort of noted it in there. One was um, that we were going to exclude uh, the cities, which we had already determined, uh, federal property, which most of all we just didn't get the information on, um, and then uh, we schools, and then the the this is for really discussion. And I'm sort of jumping ahead of myself, but in that um, overview, it says that we're excluding churches and cemeteries. So what that had come up because there were um, Mary Lipsy put together that fantastic list of all the markers, plaques, and monuments in the county. And it was uh, civil war wide, meaning that it wasn't specifically Confederate. And on that list uh, came up two Confederate plaques, one on a, a grave marker, essentially, and then one a plaque on a church uh, fence. And, you know, the, the issue's been raised is, you know, do we really want to be identifying things on grave markers and churches? So. Um, that I, I really, I'm going to put that out there. I, I think that we, it's a discussion that we ought to have as a committee. Um, right now, they're on, they're, they're being held. They're, they're not on the list of plaques and um, monuments. But uh, I wanted to, you know, just bring the topic up, up with the committee. Comments. The two that they're talking about is the one of uh, William Juan Makel, which the UDC put at his grave marker, which lists everything about um, his military career uh, as a brigadier general in the Confederate State. Uh, and it's a, it's a, uh, I forgot what it looked, I think it's a bronze plaque that lies on the ground in front of his gravestone. Uh, the other one that is, Clifton Baptist Church plaque on the fence, which I assume is in front of the church, talking about uh, how Mosby Rangers met for church and later on established the Clifton Baptist Church. So those are the two. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I just added them. I, I knew of the one at Lewinsville Presbyterian Cemetery and found the other one. Uh, they are out there on the historical marker database, and they are, you know, of course, in public view. I won't say public property, but in public view. And that's all my comments. Thanks for the details, Mary. Uh, bye. <laughs> I, I, the one on, on Makel is on church property, the Lewinsville Church. Yes. And yeah, and um, I, that's private property. It's not only private property, it's a church. Yeah, that's what I said, and it's on church property. Yes. Um, the Nagels, I mean, that it's on the ground. I mean, no, nobody, it's not like it's a sign in the street or something, and, and nobody really knows it's there unless you're looking for it. My point is, it is, is both of them are on private property. They're just in public view. That's the way I said it. They're, you know, if, if you know, they're not behind a closed door or, a, you know, et cetera. That's all. And, and, um, we, we, we are including a number of things that are on public property, like shopping centers and stuff. But I think that churches and cemeteries are just their own kind of category. Uh, and I think it would be, it could be one of these things that we just, if nothing else, it makes the report lose credibility to be thinking that we can be listing private graves. I mean, these UDC iron crosses are sprinkled around the county. You know, sometimes they're just rusty and stuck up in the weeds next to the tombstones so we don't notice them but if we start listing all the udc iron crosses it may not be a long list but it's a list um and it's i don't think it's our business mm -hmm. I, as a person who helps run a cemetery where we're still got room if anybody needs to be buried in oakton virginia um the uh 
with lovely, lovely location, historic cemetery. Um, the, uh, you know, I would be, I would just, my hackles would rise if uh, someone came to try to tell us what to do on private property. Um, and I think we already have, a, since we have a number of things that are already really not necessarily, we're, we, for the things like, like uh, homeowners associations and shopping centers and things that aren't county property, we're just trying to show that this is what it's like to live in Fairfax County, that these names are kind of all over the place possibly, depending what our research shows. But um, but I think we take it a step too far when we hit cemeteries and churches. Other comments? I agree. I think the cemeteries are, you know, should be protected. That's, um, you know, we don't need to have that in our report. I think that's fine. Uh, and I this is Liz, um, and I, I'll ask Denise to confirm this, but it's my understanding that the, the law that's going through uh, the state or has recently gone through the state exempts, um, uh, you know, cemeteries uh, as part of it. That is true. Okay, good. All right. I have a question. Mm -hmm. When we, um, can I talk about, uh, what do I want to talk about next? Schools. I want, want can I move on to the, a couple well, of this items? Is, this is Denise's report, so. No, but on this point. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, it was part of the, part of my report. Was part of her report, Anne. Yeah. So, on, on, the, on this part of her report, um, I, I would just say, are we looking at school? We're just looking at public schools, right? I mean, there's other things that could possibly be in there. So I think just for that part of the list, let's remind me to say it's public schools. Okay, right now, right now is in part of her report, we're just dealing with plaques in the church cemeteries issue. Mm -hmm. That's all, that's where we are. Um, I'm sorry, I, was, that's I, was, I was just dealing with that whole section of that we were talking about in the uh, time frame. Sorry. We're into, we're into Denise's, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, Denise, your floor. Okay, so um, I I sense a, an agreement. Yeah. To those two. Okay. Um, and and well, if I now can I address Anne's <laughs> um, comment about the school? I'm sorry, I was just trying to keep things in. You know, me and order. No, I, no, I agree. You know, let, let's let's deal with one topic at a time. And um, I just want to make sure that we put that one to bed. And now we'll now we'll talk about schools. Okay. So, you know, yeah, um, and it was my understanding, and I and I'm going to go back and confirm, but, but schools were supposed to be a separate. Uh, study because they're conducting their own study. Right. The difference I was making is SCPS versus all the private schools and the former pri the former school buildings and stuff in the county. Right. Just the only carve out is SCPS. I'm wondering whether we have uh, encountered. I see. I'm not doing the research. I am. Re I'm. I'm reading what's coming back. But for instance, uh, Flint Hill. Um, you know, do, are we are we getting any information on private schools? Not that I've seen, but then I may have not seen everything. I don't. Yeah, not and I have not seen either. Chris, Chris maybe you could answer this because you're doing like the whole well, quite a few things in the county, <laughs> not the whole county, but lot a lot. I haven't come across any private schools yet. So it may be we're not making that distinction. We're just not we're it's just schools. Right. Um I, the only one that I see that I've noticed so far is <laughs> poor green hedges is there because of green, but it's not competitive. So right. Yeah. Well that actually speaks to a point that I want to make later about you know things that are included on the list that just really should not have they're, mis, they're mismatched they're uh they're a false match a false positive if you will so uh green hedges might be one of them and my, so let me i'll continue with my report okay thank you denise yep um finding it again there we go 
Um, okay, so uh, we can uh, talked about the executive summary. <clears throat> the um, talked about, we've already discussed the African American initiatives right. under next steps. And I do agree that pr probably there needs to be a clarification that this is a history commission initiative and not something that we're suggesting that the board of supervisors do. Right. Um, for, we further refine the distinction between next steps and recommendations. And um, Barbara had referred to that as well. We also moved all of the inconclusive findings to the appendices. So what that means is that the part of the report, the, part, the body of the report will only have confirmed Confederate, confirmed things that are, were named for Confederates. And um, that those long lists of things where we're saying either family names or um, inconclusive or not applicable, those lists will be as an appendices because the board asked for an inventory of things that were named for Confederates and that's that would be in the body of the report. So that was a decision that we sort of made just structurally. So I have a, a question again that I'm bringing to the, this committee. Um, Family names can either be grouped together um, as being countywide. So if they're, for instance, if um, they, there's a name on a list and it says family name, we could refer to one group county family names, or we can separate them out by district as they've been reported to me. So for instance, um, the family names that have been reported for Drainsville would go under a Drainsville heading. However, you know, there's some limitations to that because as we know, families cross boundaries acro across the county. So um, I just want to, I want to put that out there. I sort of um, would, would lean towards having one family name uh, index, if you will, uh, and, and then have, if, People are interested in finding well, who, you know, who is this family? What's a little background about them? They just go to that one place rather than having them divided up. But I'm going to put that out there for the committee to talk about. Um, this is Mary. As a researcher or community resident, I am probably just looking at one district. I'm probably not looking at all of them. So I guess if there's a link that would take me. To the family names, that would be fine. But I don't want to take it out of, you know, Braddock District. Uh, if I'm making myself clear. Yes, you are. No, I, I I can see that point, Mary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess the only difficult would be like, for instance, you know, a name like Mason or Fairfax. Like we would have that in each district, but maybe the same description copied over. That's what would have to be done if you're going to do it by by district. Yes. Okay. I, think, I mean, I definitely would like to collaborate in the writing of them, and uh, you know, I, I have my running. I haven't written any family name summaries yet, but um, but I would love to send out a list to everybody and see if if it's already been tackled, or you know, maybe we can collaborate on that. That's a very good point, Tammy. I think you had brought that up before earlier as well, that you know there's redundancy in some of this research and it's it's a shame to have you all not be coordinating. Um, you know, if there's a way you all have the uh, the list of everybody that that's researching that's on the committee, perhaps you can um, send out your names and um, encourage other people to do so as well. I'm I would like to, I'm thinking this through, but <clears throat> if you could have in a district and if you come up with Fox or you come up with Hunter, then the information would be C and then that would be the link to take you to C family names. And then it would be one, that way you're consistent. You have one description of the Lee family, one description of the Fox, one description of um, the Gunnel. So that there's there's one place they all go to. They're all reading the same thing. I think I may be saying what Mary was suggesting, but we 
we denote this is where you go to find it. Particularly since the family names are together because there's so much information and I think we have to be as concise and direct as we possibly can for them or their staff, whoever's going to read this. I think, uh, I think a link is the best thing. Pardon me? I think a link is the best thing, just that it's repeated in each of the districts. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so, a big suggestion. Anne? Um, I, I kind of, I think that's a good thing if we can do links. Um, one list is probably easier for a lot of reasons. But then there will, there because we're really big county geographically, there may well be Smiths in South County that are different from Smiths in North County. And I don't know if we care um, or if we're able to deal with it. These are the Smiths of the Centerville area. Uh, you know, that would be the one complication of having one big list. But maybe, I don't know, some of you who are seeing the bigger picture like Chris, maybe it wouldn't i just know actually it's your fault chris because when i was reading your um wonderful um material on hunter mill and on these different families members that you came up with i'm like wow that's so interesting but i didn't really expect it so i don't know so if there are if there are multiple um you know, different families in different areas, you know, in our master list, we could have Smith in parentheses, Mount Vernon and Smith in parentheses, Centerville and Drainsville or, you know, um, yeah. some way of um, just differentiating when somebody comes from a district, you know, see the Smith family, then they can see exactly which one they're being linked to. I think that's actually making the argument for keeping the the districts and the family names separate. So you, for instance, um, all of the family names that I get from Providence would just be listed in Providence, and and then you you don't have there's no there's no compiling of the family names. It's they just the research that I got from Providence is contained in Providence. So I I think I think it could go either way. Um, I just was wondering what would be most helpful. Uh, and, and it sounds like we have arguments for both. So if the, we're, we, I think we've agreed that the family names will be um, at the back. So they would be listed again by district. So you would see Lee in every district or, you know, Fairfax in every district is, is and that's a question. Um, I think I, I think that's the question that we originated with, though, Mark, Barbara, if, if I'm understanding. Yeah, that's, is that the decision that's been reached? Yeah, I think it would be very difficult for me. No, I don't think so. Actually, I take that back. It, uh, maybe it's a time thing, you know, just how much time it comes down to. Um, it would be easiest, <laughs> easiest if the let's say um i'm going to pick on drainsville here if i just be like, careful now I, <laughs> well, I, I know i know drainsville the the best um right now i do so if i just um put all of the drainsville lists together and then all of the family names that came out of drainsville together and call that the drainsville section of the report and then I did the same for Providence, did the same for Hunter, et cetera, et cetera, moving down the line. Now it does mean that the research will be, uh, that, that perhaps we may have family names that are repeated. And to Tammy's point, it might, they might not all say the same, right? Um, because I am getting family names from everybody. Right. And that might be just for time's sake, uh, given that it is, uh, September 30th, and it's we're, you know fi final due in one month. Um, it might be easiest that that that's the way that it needs to be handled in order in order for just to get this compiled. I I I understand. I would agree. It's not wrong. It's probably not 
best. I think best would be to have a list of family names that look back to each each district, but I, I'm not sure that we're going to have time to do that. Talking this through. Well, and I, I think Ann, Ann or someone made the point that the, the, the supervisors, they're going to go to their own district. Yep. And so that's what they're going to be. I presume that's what they're, it would be my interest. If I had this huge report, I would go to my district to, to do my analysis. I think what are you going to do with all the leftovers? They're mm -hmm. going to be right up to, it won't apply to anything. What are you going to do with all of those? Well, um, I know one thing we just agreed that the, all the research would go to the Virginia room. So I would, that there's one. I guess, that, I guess wait, my guess I'm saying, is that going to go into the report or a separate um, item is, I guess what I'm saying. I don't think it would go to the board of supervisors if I understood what we just said. Okay. Uh huh. But it would be it would go in the Virginia room as a uh, compile a compilation of all of the research. Correct. Okay. I just want, was trying to distinguish. Okay. Chris, Chris, you raised your hand. I guess I'm a little confused. Um, I understand that all the research comes in the Virginia room. But I also thought somebody had just mentioned that the very last appendix is going to be all of the inconclusive ones. So isn't that everything else that we ruled out? So Carol has done um, additional research on the thing. She's provided additional research on things that came up to be not family names or not um, confederately related. Mm -hmm. So that would be or, or mildly federally or confederately related. Or we, we don't have a category for mildly confederate. <laughs> right. <laughs> the char the charge is names of people that were confederate military or political. That's what the specific charge or, or motion or matter is. If we go way back to June. So I think what we're trying to do, we have so much, is to hone in on what they actually asked for with no idea of the enormity of all of this so that we can say, this is what you asked for, and here's, back to Greg and his methodology, here is how we got to these names. These are in the back. Right? Am I right, Denise? Right. right. And um, the appendices, Chris, just to let you know, are just lists and then with the family names. They're just the lists that say, you know, whatever you've denoted and then the family names, which are you know, just the, sh the short bios of the family names. I have a question. Mary? The two subdivisions in Braddock District are all Civil War, not necessarily Confederate. So will that go into the report or just the Confederate ones or what? Yeah, so Mary, um, my thought, I was just looking at those today as a matter of fact. My thought is just to leave them in there exactly the way you presented them. Okay. As a as a group, you know, as a, a because it's a subdivision. Right. That has this theme. Yeah. So, and that's the way you, you, uh, you know, structured the template and it, you've done a great job of listing each resource and, and what the tie is and what, what those names mean. Okay. All I right. don't know why I would pull it apart um, unless somebody else wants to do that job. And remember there was someone, I don't know, I don't know which supervisor they're interested in the balance. They wanted to know what what union was here. I mean, that was sort of an aside, but it's in there somewhere. So I think it's important, and that also supports our our presentation with the brochure. Is that the county was it was everybody, union and Confederate. So you take out the Confederate, and you only have half the half the story. So. How is this report going to be presented to the Board of Supervisors? At the Land Use Committee. So it's a committee of the whole. So it's not it's not going as a, uh, you know, to the, it's going to the board, but it's not, it's going in committee. Okay. 
So, I mean, but is anybody going to be answering questions about it? Or are they just getting copies? Yes, um, I know that I will be there and I believe, um, I, I know Barbara will be there and I believe Anne will be there as well. Okay, I was just curious. And when I say be there, that might be a virtual thing that we're doing. Um, we may not physically be there. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like we're going to continue on with our separation by district, and I think that's probably the easiest thing. Right. Thanks for, for talking that through with me. Um, the last question that, well, uh, let me just state a fact here. Uh, the streets in Fort Belvoir, uh, that came up, and we talked, Tam, Tammy has this information already, but we determined that since they're on federal property, uh, they'll just be noted uh, in the notes column, you know, the Fort Belvoir or federal property or something like that, and they do not need to be researched. And then, and then that's for the post, the Mosby post office too, right? At federal property, I think we're just going to, you know, call it federal property. I don't know whether the Mosby post office came up in our list. I don't think it did, did it? Yeah, see? Yeah, it didn't. We got shaking heads, no, so no. Okay, good. Okay. And then the last uh, question that I had and I want to bring to this, um, this committee is that I want to propose dropping off all of the false matches that uh, Matt had already you know, sort of sorted out. He provided that information to the commission just so you could see that, you know, the, the process that the um, algorithm went through when it did the matching, but it they weren't ever really meant to be brought forward as part of the report. And I, it, we did a compilation of Drainsville already. Oh no, excuse me, not Drainsville, Springfield. We put together all of the information and just, just the list, it was 55 pages. So that's <laughs> that as an addendum for one, you know, one uh, district. So I, I really strongly urge the committee to consider um, dropping off all of those false positives at a minimum. Let's just start there because I don't think it's necessary to report that that information. I actually have a question about that. So, um, so, um, so the false positives that Matt had, he had at the bottom of the list and they were all in red, right? Yes. So, so those are definitely out. Um, and then, so there's false positives that I've identified, which is like, for example, foxglove. Like we know that that's not the Fox family. Um, so, so you're suggesting to drop that off also to go ahead and delete that. I was not suggesting that, but I am I'm willing to entertain that. <laughs> I would okay. love to entertain that. Cause there's a, cause that gets into a gray area because there are some things like, um, you know, for, for example, when we're talking about this being a product that goes to the Virginia room, um, when somebody goes to look it up, like Foxglove, I think is pretty obvious that we know that that's not the Fox family, but, um, but something like Holland Hall and Hall, like they may not, they may not, they may think like, maybe that is the Hall family. Um, so those things have, uh, good historical information in them. So I guess I would advocate for those false positives. But um, but I'm okay with getting rid of Foxglove. I would say that there's so much. My counter to that would be that that there's other ways to learn about Holland Hall. So I, I again, my goal, of course, is to is to shrink things. So maybe I'm on the wrong track. But I just think that this is not a comprehensive research of the. It, it's of a specific aspect of county history so i i don't see the need well, I, I would like to see that all gone i'm going the other way because as a researcher comes by 20 years from now and sees all these streets with c-a-r-r on them just having a notation that edward carr was a developer in fairfax county goes oh okay that's where the name came from but, but i'm just Suggesting that. Okay, and I'm. I have I, like a, I'm. All, I'm almost always of two minds about these darn things. Um, part of me just loves 
I know this is not the Denise and Barbara point of view, but um, part of me just loves the idea of the visual of thousands of names that we paid attention to. We didn't ignore them. I only ignored most of Matt's red ones, although I've cast an eye over them out of interest. Um, but then, then you do, you get all this crow's nest and purple martin and village green that is tempting. That stuff, when it really is geography or nature, it's tempting to dump it all. But on the other hand, we looked at it. We had to write words in that damn, sorry for the minute, darn um, <laughs> uh, notes column on every single Thing except for all the ones I left for Chris, and I, it's just, it, we 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 have worked so hard on this, and to if I mean I really get it that fifty one pages is long, but you know what we each went through a whole lot of pages ourselves, so maybe we have to think about what's our message here. Um, and I'm not, I don't have a summary of this comment, um, cause I'm still in process, but is our goal to say, yep, we really did. I mean, telling them we looked at over 25,000 names is nice, but having a gigantic unwieldy report, I don't see the, I don't see why it's terrible. Well, it's not going to be in the report, right? So, for instance, Holland Hall and Cooper Road are not going to be in the report. They're going to be in the Virginia room. Or are they? Are they? Or are they going to? I I don't. I guess I can't remember where they come. Oh, let's look. Because Cooper Road is not, at least in my area, Cooper Road is not inconclusive. It's conclusive. It's not named after Samuel Cooper. But to me, that's the only. In, in these um, in these lists that we have is the only place where this is documented who Cooper Road is named after, which is kind of amazing that we know that now because we've gone through this process. And so that's why I would I think I would advocate having the false positives that actually were we have information now about how a road was named. Well, the way I took notes on this part of the conversation was that yes, the body of the report is the confirmed Confederate names and the addenda, addenda is NA, in, not applicable, inconclusive and family. So I could I could have heard that wrong, but I, I felt like sort of everything else goes in the addenda. And all we're discussing now is whether the, the so-called false positives um, are should be included at all but i i feel you tell us uh denise i feel like everything that's definitely not everything that's inconclusive and everything that's family at the moment is in there somewhere so um what i am suggesting what i'm proposing right now is that everything that you received when you received the list from matt that was marked in red that we drop those off right now we just agree to not include that information in in the report in the addendum and i will speak in favor of that because if you take nine districts and you multiply it by 50 pages a piece what do you have and that's not even you all this is again it's not an academic exercise we need to give them what they want, and we have done an enormous amount of work, much more than um, I know that Barbara Peters has spoken directly with Supervisor Palchek, who apparently is a friend, and told her what all has happened with all of this work. And Palchek said she was sorry; she had no idea. Now that's now it's recorded, but that's what happened. And so the the point is is that we need to make it so that they are they understand the seriousness of what we're giving them and denise has made made sure that the number of 26,552 i think that's it i memorized it the number is there of what we started with 
And what Matt did, it, it served, he did the first gleaning. That's what we had him do. So I, I just really- Great. Support, and I, oh, go ahead. I agree with that. Like that, to me, that was a different definition of false positive to me. Like, so I agree, everything that's in red was part of that process. And I mean, I honestly did not analyze anything that was in red. No, we weren't. To me, that was already ruled out. Right, gone. right, right. If we so make, I, so if we what? make the decision um, to uh, get rid of that, I don't think that's too hard of a decision. That's step number one. Um, it, can I, do you mind if I just understand what, again what goes in the appendices in terms of if the body of the report is the conclusive Confederate names confirmed, then the the appendices, I'm trying to think what we've ruled out. We've now, it, it sounds like this conversation will end up ruling out the Matt false positive. So that's, that's a step, that's a decision. And then the next question in my mind is, um, kind of go into the Tammy false positives of the, of the, of the, um, um, the geographic and nature things, and then, uh, then the the, re the rest of the question of the other parts of our research is it, is it going to be the, the 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 absolutely confirmed not, the inconclusive and the family names. What goes and and what goes in the addenda at this time? If you look, is the, is I mean in the appendices, is the county historical family names and inconclusive Confederate association divided by magisterial districts. I see that. All right, and then in you, if you go to the actual project results data, you have the Park Authority's previous efforts. You have conclusive Confederate association by magisterial district. You have the memorials and plaques. Again, the, the one memorial is Mar in the process, that's it. And then you have the special Sangster marker historical narrative. And that's it, which is still a lot when you, but that's, I just have to lift my phone off the hook, excuse me. Uh, I don't say to myself, Denise, you can see it. The filtered list that we went through and put yay and nay, those will go into the appendices. I I would feel comfortable if they just go to the Virginia room. I, when I was working on them, originally just thought they were worksheets for us, uh, but uh, Chris has done a tremendous amount of job when he said no, he you know, gave all sorts of information why they shouldn't be. Uh, like the Graham family on Graham Road. Uh, so, again, I don't want to lose that information, but I do not think that that, well, uh, that filtered list where we just put yes or no on needs to go with the report. But say somewhere that it's available. If we want to go through the process and see why we said yes or no. That's a very interesting suggestion, Mary. Um, so what, we would leave off inconclusive or the negatives and really all we would be reporting in the addendum or in the appendices or the family names. That's I was going to say, I, I wouldn't lump those two together. So to me, it's like Cooper Road, we absolutely have ruled out definitely. So to me, that doesn't belong in the report at all. But then we have an inconclusive name, and that does belong in the report in my mind. I, I agree. If there is a possibility, we have a confederate who has the name of the street, and his home was, that's the way I was looking at it, his home was in the area, then I put that he was a possibility, okay? I don't know all the Jackson streets. Are they all named after Stonewall Jackson? But it's a possibility. Anything like uh, Martin's Landing, to me, that's not anywhere near a Confederate. It doesn't need to be in the appendices. It doesn't need to be in the inventory. But 
a record of it that it was looked at and it was decided no Confederate connection. That's just my opinion. We we do have a fairly um, frequent notation, or at least I have noticed it in the lists I've looked at is a no uh, the idea of no no known connection, which is a little bit different from inconclusive. It's a different emphasis. I I had never thought of no known connection as inconclusive. Hmm. I think perhaps, um, and, and Anne's getting to this point right now, with the uh, nuances of terminology <laughs> and having at a minimum five probably plus researchers working on this, I think it might just be best to attach the lists as they, are, they were turned in, but eliminating Matt's false positives straight right off the bat. And let let people who want to do the research, you know, look at the lists if they want to look at the lists. That's, that's, that's my suggestion. Great. That sounds good to me. And then Cooper Road can remain on there as a as a definite no. Um, and then uh, Jackson Street can rename remain on there as a maybe, but we don't know. How does everybody feel about that? It's all right with me. Greg says thing. Okay. <laughs> it only means so you're saying the actual things that we sent or that Chris creates become the uh, attachments at the end. And so that is essentially our worksheets, maybe cleaned up a little if we've done been a little too casual here and there. Okay. I understand. Right, that would go just as uh, at the end as an appendices, along with the lists of family names. Um, and, and you're right, and they'll need to be cleaned up um, because the particularly the colors we're going to have to. Yeah, the colors we're going to have to to get rid of entirely. So, but I I don't know how to reconcile when somebody says inconclusive versus when somebody says. Uh, what was the other term that you just used? Um, no, known connection. No known connection. Well, no known connection to me. That's conclusive. But you know something, some other M N A. You know, I don't, I, I don't know how to back to your N A. <laughs> so I don't know how to. I don't know. I, you know, personally, and I, I that means going back to people. Um, you know, I just we didn't we didn't define our terms at the beginning. Um, it's not necessary to define them because all we need. To, to give the, re, the Board of Supervisors the report that they want, all we need is the confed, confirmed Confederate associations. Right. Okay, thank you so much. That is the end of my report. All right, thank you. Uh, Chris, would you like to offer any comment on all the work you're doing for your report? For you to the one that I worked on? Whatever you'd like to say. Okay. Sending well, you more and more and more. Can you verify this? Can you do this? And bless you. <laughs> you become my life sending now. back, sending back with big done or final on it. It's wonderful. So Chris. Well, I'm happy to say Springfield is done. Mason district is done. Lee district is done. Hunter Mill is Almost done and just sent uh, the street list. So I'm going to start looking at that later this week. But everything else is done. Um, Braddock District, um, I think Nisa and I put that to bed yesterday. Uh, Mary, we looked at a couple um, of inventory reports that you sent, and I was able to cross off some more um, that weren't Confederate. It turns out that they weren't. And then um, Providence, I'm not sure where we're at. Um, Mary and I both collaborated on that one, and I think we're still waiting on Sue. But uh, that's all that I've been working on. Okay, yeah, that it's that when I I send thanks to you and Mary and Sue because that's been a challenge and that's without a commissioner to even guide people. So thank you for your efforts and I know you 
tried to split it in three ways and in theory it's good but when you get to doing it it makes it it's it's very layered so let's see where sue is we're running out of time so we need to see where she is on that okay um all right tammy where are you on mount vernon um i'm doing very well um so I have finished everything like I just finished subdivisions and I, I haven't sent it forward because um, I'm really um, cleaning that up at the same time as I'm doing the streets. I'm copying and pasting a lot between because there's some similarities. Um, I have a less than half of the streets left, so I'm really um, narrowing in. So um, so really, I just have to finish the streets and then um, just pull out of there the family names that I need to write up. And I really don't think I'm, I'm, I might have maybe one or two templates, but um, not very many. So that's where I am. Okay. And um, I don't know. Cheryl is not part of our committee and she's doing Sully. I think she finally is talking with you, Chris. Can you update us? Do you know what her face is? Saturday? I think it was Saturday. I can't remember. Maybe it was Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. The days come to each other. Okay. Uh, she was in here and we just touched base. Uh, so she's still working on it. And I, I offered, you know, whenever she's ready to, to turn it over, I'd be happy to assist, but I'm not sure how far along she is. Uh, Denise, I know um, she never received the link to the share file. Um, and I tried to send it to her. I'm not sure if it worked or not. Um, so maybe you can resend it to her to see if it might, might help her. But um, Thanks for letting me know that, Chris. I appreciate that. Sure, sure. Okay. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure how far along she is. I don't know. All right, and um, I think that I think that Mary, you just keep working on beyond Braddock. You worked on, you know, um, Mason. Um, Mason's finished, right, Chris? Yes. Yeah, so um, I think we're getting close. If you look at the date, it is the ninth. And the ninth is not this week, but next week. So we are getting into into crunch time. Um, I know I owe something on the ninth um, on the lost cause. And Tammy and Cheryl, Tammy, since you're not doing anything else, <laughs> uh, the centennial recognition at the nexus of county growth. And this is not a big. This is just a statement, really. Not it doesn't require too much other than you know what you all want to say but it's hopefully can be um direct and concise and i'm going to add a, <clears throat> a little section to it when you all finish pointing out that in addition to the, the traditional lost cause and using it as a means during um to fight um integration in um the civil rights time is that in some instances the streets were named because um, actual battles happened there. We think of Stuart Ridge out by, it used to be Ridge Road, and then it became Stuart Ridge. I think that's right, Greg. And we, Greg and I talked about it because of the Battle of Drainsville. And I know around Ox Hill and also out by Bull Run, some of the names are because an action actually took place there. So we just want to add that to remind them. Um, and... Um, Liz has hers, and so I think Denise. Did you, I think we're, did can, you want my report? I thought you was finished. Yes. Do you have more to say, Carol? Go. Yes. I don't know if I've given a report. I was going to ask if Denise wanted to give it. <laughs> Are you on, Denise? She's I am. I, I, I turned my I turned mine in. So, but Denise, do you want to um, give my report? Uh, sure. So um, Carol and I have been working through um, the the she, Carol turned in 124 templates, I think. Um, and she and I have been working through whether whether we really determine uh, Confederate connections or not. It's it's a complicated issue, as you all are encountering that you know, many of the families were uh, had Confederate uh, members, but 
the resources or uh, assets, whatever you were calling them, might not, they might just be family names and might not have any specific Confederate connections. So um, we're, we're working through that. We, we had a lot of back and forth over the weekend and, um, and now we're going to be uh, kind of settle, settling on the, the ones that we actually think are, are definite, definitely confederately named. Okay, thank you, Carol. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to ignore you. I just kind of thought, oh, that's taken care of. I will say that <clears throat> I've seen some that we've talked about. This is in Herndon, I believe, and they have like a yellow tavern and Young's Point. And when we this had to be somebody that just loves Civil War battles because Yellow Tavern is down by Vicksburg. And Young's Point, I can't remember right now where it was. But no, 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 wait. Yeah, well, but Yellow Tavern is in Virginia. It's outside of Richmond. It's where Jeb Stewart was killed. Oh, that's right. Well, what's yeah. Young's Point? I'm sorry. <laughs> Young's, no, you're right. You're right. I got it mixed up because I read them together. And then Young's Point is the one that's down by um, Vicksburg. But anyway, the point is that they were naming battles and... Um, the, the ones they listed, often the union came out ahead, but they were, it's, I think, somebody that just enjoyed, you know, was pointing out Civil War battles. It was not connected to Fairfax County, and so then you have to make a decision on those. I think we decided we would do Civil War on that. Yeah. If, yeah, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yep. I was yes. just about to yes. say that. Yeah. For, for the... The place names, um, and then also she, Carol had found the monitor in the Merrimack, and right. um, we thought that again that would be Civil War and not necessarily Confederate. Right. So yes, excuse me for mixing it up, but that's right. That, that's all right. Okay. Um, all right. I want to know what you, <clears throat> if if we have everyone's report, and I. Phyllis, I, your, Lee is done. If you have any comments, offer them. Only that I'm never going to be able to repay Chris <laughs> for everything that he's done. I, I, <laughs> Thank you. I think all of us. I think all of us. In that. Um, okay. What did you all? What do you all think about um, including this? This story of the Koreans and seeing the whole story up in the Smithsonian. That was a suggestion made to me. I was just going to share it because I thought it made an interesting point, but more than one has said that they thought that would be a good idea to include, but I'm totally open to what you all think. And I don't mind if you say it's not appropriate or I think it's fine. I'll, re I'll formalize it a little bit and put it in as an example of what I, interpreting history is about. I, I kind of like it because it shows. Um, it shows your long part, partly because it shows. Your long experience in interpreting history for the public and then and then the specific story is is so it just it's it's such a almost a wake up call that oh yeah there are people who are our civil war is so different from that kind of civil war or many others because we did all um sort of at least end up being americans at the end not sudan residents and south sudan residents we we are all you know we got to we got back together and we value each other where we have our flaws, but we are one nation. And I think that's what we're trying to. That's why we tell all the story, the parts of the story, because not all. That's why we pip. That's why we tell at least some of the story on both sides, on two sides. Um, so I. I kind of like it. It doesn't. It doesn't take away, and it gives an interesting insight uh, to something culturally very different. But I like. I mean, you just reminded me of 
of Mary's comments too, that there are really three sides or three points of view on that. And I think that's also a very good thing to put in some introductory remarks. You will be quoted for the rest of time in Fairfax County. Thank you for that. Well, I sing from uh, my heart and 30 years of teaching. It was important. Other people, what do you think? Don't be shy. I don't care. <laughs> I think the story, it, it, both Barbara and I volunteer at the Smithsonian, and it, it is so interesting to see foreigners' perspective as they come through our museum right. and, and learn, and to see that that was shocking to them. I, I think it's valuable. I would think, Barbara, you think, Barbara, Barbara it's, a it's a good story to add on. And add on. I didn't get it because there was an echo. Yeah, no, I, I think it's a good story. You've got the pen. I, I would include it. Okay. Who else? Phyllis? Phyllis? Yeah, I, I agree. I think it reinforces um, getting the board to really look at and think about how to present history. Okay. Okay. Carol? Carol? Uh, I think it's fine. Okay. Uh, staff, you're welcome to come in as well. Chris? It's great. It was a weird day. <laughs> All right, Liz? So, uh, Barbara, Liz had to jump off for a four o'clock call. Oh, okay. And we're four o'clock two. So, so I. I think, I think we're adjourning if I will go forward and, and put it as a draft and we'll present it um, at the commission meeting. And um, um, I believe that um, and I propose October 15th as the next meeting for us, at which point. Uh, uh, I thought, wait a minute, October 15th? Yeah, I originally put okay. it because I had the date wrong, but it's the win it's a Wednesday, the 15th. Did you want me to share that motion that I'm working on? For the, for the oh, oh, we didn't do that. Oh, Denise so, has to go. Yeah, um, Barbara. Yes, it's the 14th. It's yeah, the, the 15th. Is a, is a Thursday. Whatever that Wednesday is, I apologize. Okay. It's the 14th. And it's the and, 14th. Yeah, I just looked on the calendar. So please, I think I sent out a state the date already. I think you did as well. Hopefully, I sent it out for the right date. Okay, it's the four. It's whatever that Wednesday is. It's the fourteenth. Okay, sorry. And Mary, we I don't know what to do since ten, um, since Denise has to go. Um, Mary was going to talk about about the what she's doing and dealing with Palchek's motion about these new markers, so that you'd be aware. So let me clarify, I don't need to go. Liz had to go. Oh, Liz had to go. Okay. Sorry, but you see, I have white boxes. And so <laughs> I just sorry. heard a voice. I just heard a voice. All right, good. Yes, Mary, I wanted to, I thought that you could share. Um, I think I think you all got a, um, a an email um, with Palchek's um, fourth motion, which deals with these markers, and Mary has the assignment. So, Mary? Well, I'll tell you, it was a shock to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, to hear the History Marker Committee was getting an assignment. Um, I'm just going to read the uh, motion. I move that the Board of Supervisors work with the Fairfax County History Commission Marker Committee and VDHR to obtain information on the process for preparing one or more markers to more fully describe the historic context of the actions at the Fairfax Courthouse, including those that occurred at the Battle of the Fairfax Courthouse and additional periods of history. Topics in history could include the Reconstruction Era, voting at the courthouse, and the experiences of the African American community. It was uh, moved by Supervisor Palachik and discussed and passed. So I have outlined and then I'm going to put the meat of uh, behind all of this, but I'm going to be talking about the process 
of um, history commission marker applications, VDHR, and uh, what I can tell them about ordering a commercial wayside marker. I also will address the cost for each one of them, uh, choosing a location, uh, who owns the marker, who maintains it, an estimated timeline from the receipt of the application until the marker is installed. And uh, some of that will be just based on what I know for the History Commission. I also submitted some questions, which Denise was able to work with a staff member from um, Supervisor Palachik's office. Uh, one is who's paying for the markers, and we're working on that. How does the master plan impact if we install markers and then they have to be moved? Uh, will there be funding for uh, removal and new installation? Who will research and write the text for the markers? Will the community be involved in suggesting topics for the markers? And will the markers be all the same style or a mixture? And I will be writing all of that information up in bullet, uh, probably rather than in paragraphs, and submit it as a response from the history as a response from the history commission to uh, the board of supervisors. That's it. Barbara, you're on mute. I just said, I just said, are there any thoughts or comments? It's a, it's a, a large, it's a large assignment. So I'll, I'll jump in. It, it sounds like Mary's got the, the right approach. Um, and I was surprised to hear it come so quickly uh, during the meeting as well. Um, Mary, I imagine you were <laughs> as well. But I, I would look on it as an opportunity, right? If, if we can tell a balanced, fact-based, inclusive, comprehensive view, um, uh, you know, the the Mar Monument was, was limited to just that, you know, tiny little skirmish on a, on a single point in time uh but being able to tell the, the broader story um of events that unfolded in and around the, the courthouse and the conference there i think makes a great deal of sense and from a commission perspective we ought to view it as an opportunity again recognizing all sorts of issues to work on down the road in terms of cost and text and and um all of that I also am uh, giving gas for uh, where well, I thought that they might want to have specific topic suggestions. So I'm suggesting slavery in Fairfax County, the vote for secession, battle or skirmish at uh, June 1st, 1861 at the courthouse, Fairfax County denied colored troops, reconstruction, the 1867 uh, constitutional vote. Uh, segregation in education and community, and the Redson Wall School. Those are all suggestions that I have for them. If anybody has any others, I'd be glad to add them as, uh, you know, uh, additional ideas. I have, a, I have a question, Mary, and that is, are these, do we know if these markers are going to go in places where an event or a personage or a site is related to the, to the message? Because all those are, are legitimate, you know, items or subjects, but I don't know how you, where you put some of them. Well, that's, that's the, the problem. Is, is the idea to tell the story or is it to tell the story of the courthouse? And I think we need to get that clear from them. Okay. Chris? How does this dovetail into the ongoing Fairfax Courthouse Master Plan? I mean, because I, I know they've been considering markers as well that that obviously isn't related to the Mar Monument, but other things on the courthouse property. Is there any collaborate, or have they even already decided what markers in the Master Plan that they're going to put? I hadn't heard that they're going to be putting any, but so I, I can't answer that. I don't know. 
So I just um, wanted to point out that in Supervisor Palchik's motion in Mary, I'm sorry, you may have mentioned this, that she specifically asked for um, one for context to start context of uh, quote unquote, the battle of Fairfax Courthouse. Um, but we know that there is you know, more to say than as um, Greg just pointed out that the one person died there. She also um, specifically lists uh, the reconstruction era voting at the courthouse and the experiences of the African American community. So if if it needs to be specifically tied to the courthouse, which makes sense, a geographical era 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 area, excuse me, then those themes um, you just need to tie those themes to that specific location. And I think Mary, you know, some of the the ideas that Mary's come up with are, are viable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other any other thoughts or comments to pass on to Mary? Okay, Mary. Good writing and good good sleuthing and researching. So, anything else? Denise, have we covered everything? I think I think on my list we have. Um, are you? Um, yes. I appreciate everybody's input on all of these little decisions, and just know this is what Anne, Barbara, and I get together every Friday afternoon and and delve into the the structure. Oh, and there goes my phone. So, okay. Um, I I am moving adjournment, and um, we will meet again on October fourteenth at two o'clock. Thank you all for your time, your effort, and your expertise, and your caring about what we're doing. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Barbara. Bye bye. Bye.